curiosity, wonder, imagination. These are the foundations of innovation. From the most simple to the most complex, all innovations began with a question or a problem to solve. As a host for Arizona's State Science and Engineering Fair, AZCEF, Arizona Science Center has witnessed some of the most amazing research-based and engineering projects from students just like yourself. Working through the scientific process and completing a science fair project may seem like a lot of work, but these skills developed during this process will benefit you throughout your life. Not only are you able to dig in and learn deeply about a project that you're passionate about, but you also strengthen your ability to think critically, collaborate with others, be creative, and increase your science communication skills. Before starting your science fair project, you'll need to get a notebook where you can keep all of your questions, your ideas, your notes, research, and the data that you collect. Some people prefer to use a notebook with lined pages. Others prefer to use ones with graph paper pages. Either one works, it just depends on what you prefer. Once you have your notebook, it's time to dig into your project. Let's quickly review all the steps before going into detail about each one. The first step is to choose your topic of interest. Next, you're gonna develop a question to explore or a problem to solve. You're gonna conduct your research and form a hypothesis. You're going to design a way to test that hypothesis. You're going to experiment and collect the data. And then the final step, after you've put it all together and analyzed your results, you're going to create your presentation so that you can share those results with others. When determining your science fair project, it is important to choose something that you care about, something that interests you, maybe even, some, even something that has impacted your family or community. Maybe you're interested in solving problems related to climate change, determining the best worms and organic material needed for composting, or researching and developing a new test or vaccine for an unknown virus. Whatever topic you choose, it should be something that you are passionate about. Many times your topic of interest is directly tied to a question you already have or a problem you want to solve. Remember, your testable question needs to be testable, which means it can be answered by designing and conducting an experiment as well as how one thing changes another. However, if this isn't the case, I've, I have included a couple of question stems and examples for you. In each of these questions, question stems, there is an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is what you are changing in your experiment. The dependent variable is what is being affected. Check out these examples and see if you can determine the independent and the dependent variable for each. The words in red are the independent variables. Those are the variables that we are changing in our experiment. The words in green are the dependent variables. Those are the variables that are being affected by the change. Before jumping in to find the answer to your question or the problem that you've identified, you will need to do some background research. This will help you learn what scientists think they already know about the topic. There are two types of sources you can use when conducting your research, primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are those firsthand accounts, such as interviews, and secondary sources are those that other people have written. The secondary sources tend to be the easier to access, but if you are able to interview a scientist or someone with expertise in an area that you are investigating, that would be fantastic. Once you've conducted your research, 
Use this information to develop your hypothesis of what you think will happen. When you state your hypothesis, you are predicting a cause and effect relationship. How will changing the independent variable change the dependent variable? You can write your hypothesis by restating your testable question as a statement. For example, if you were to investigate what effect the amount of time a flower had in direct sunlight had on the how fast it grew, your testable question might be, how does the amount of sunlight a flower receive each day affect its growth? After conducting a little research to learn what scientists already know in this area, your hypothesis statement might be, flowers that receive at least four hours of sunlight a day will live and grow. This is a very simplistic research question, but you get the idea. A very important part of your science fair project is to design a way in which you plan to conduct your experiment. Developing your plan or protocol, outlining exactly how you plan to conduct your experiment is key in making sure your research is accurate. During this phase, you will need to consider what materials um, you will need in conducting your experiment, what steps you're going to follow, and where you plan to record your data. As you design the investigation, make sure you consider all types of variables involved. Independent variables are the things that you are going to change throughout your experiment. The dependent variable is what is being affected by the change. Controlled variables are those that remain constant. In the previous example about sunlight and the flower, the variable that changes the independent variable is the amount of time the plant will spend in the sun. The dependent variable, the one that is affected by the change, is the plant. And the variable that is controlled, or the constant, is the sunlight. Regardless of the amount of time, the flower will receive sunlight each day. There are several things to keep in mind when you're conducting an experiment. Number one, conduct your experiment as planned using the protocol you developed. If you have to do something different one day, make sure to make a note of it in your lab journal. Number two, take careful notes and draw pictures throughout the experiment. Drawing pictures and diagrams detailing any changes you see can be very important in documenting your results. Number three, make sure to record all data neatly in one place, such as your lab journal. And number four, repeat the experiment several times, at, or at least two to three times, to make sure that your data is accurate. Throughout your investigation, make sure to make sure you are regularly collecting data and make sure to collect both types of data. Qualitative data includes observations that you can make using your senses of sight, smell, touch, sound, and taste. However, don't taste anything that could be potentially harmful or poisonous. Quantitative data are those data points that are collected through tools, such as rulers, scales, timers, graduated cylinders, etc. This type of data uses numbers to describe the amount of something. After all data is collected, you will need to analyze it to, to, to determine what your findings are. After you've conducted your investigation and gathered and analyzed your data, you will need to be prepared to communicate your findings with the public. Of course, the public could be your school's science fair, a district science fair, a state science fair, or as in this picture, an international science fair. Your presentation board is your opportunity to share your project with the public and judges. You will want to make sure that your board gets the attention of the judges and clearly communicates your processes and finding. A well-designed project board provides an overview of your project, 
ex as well as explains the scope of the project and the research and results. There are basic components that need to be included in your science fair presentation board. The left panel is where the story of the experiment or investigation should be chronicled in precise steps. Typically, this panel includes your testable question, hypothesis, variables, materials, and procedure. The center panel includes the title, as well as any charts, graphs, pictures, and data that you collected. And the right panel includes the results, conclusions, and abstract. Some science fairs will have specific paperwork, which is also placed on the right-hand panel. Most presentation board components were discussed earlier in this presentation. However, we have not yet discussed the abstract. The abstract is one of the most important parts of your presentation. It will serve as an overview of your work and an abbreviated version of the full science report. Many science fairs limit the, limit the abstract to about 250 words. So it's important to be succinct in your wording. Abstracts typically include five elements. The introduction, which is where you describe the purpose of your science fair project. Your problem statement, where you identify the problem you solved or the hypothesis you investigated. The procedures that you followed throughout your investigation and the results. What data did you find? Be specific. And last but not least, your conclusion. Did you meet your objectives? What was the final overall results? And what, if anything, did this project contribute to scientific community? Now that we've walked through the steps involved in completing a science fair project, I hope you are ready to begin yours. Use your curiosity, wonder, and imagination as your driving force to develop the next great innovation. This is Beth Nickel from Arizona Science Center, hoping that this presentation has provided you with the information you will need to begin your science fair project. Check out our website at azscience.org for a slew of science, technology, engineering, and math activities, resources, and videos, as well as more information on the state-level science and engineering fair, AZSEF.